Debbie Gatlin, and this week as I was praying for a devotion for you, the Lord led me to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. It's the first and second verses. It says this, fear not. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. Neither will the flames kindle upon you. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Yes. Now, about when I was like 20 years old, I was given a job, a summer job, at a place called Union Carbide in Ashtabula, Ohio. And it was, a, it's, it's a, it was a steel mill at that time. And when they took me into to where I was going to be working, I was overwhelmed by the heat in that place. There was molten metal everywhere. And that's what they do. The steel mill does is they have molten metal. And they had these great big pitchers that they took overhead on a crane. And my job was that I would pick up these big, big hooks and chains and I would lift them and hook this, this, them to this, this pitcher. And then the crane would lift it up and it would fill, they would fill that pitcher with molten metal. Then it would go overhead and then it would be poured into these chills that I had prepared. And I had to pass through the midst of these chills filled with molten metal with this big wool coat on and this big kind of a shield over my face and these big, big thick gloves. And I, so I was working around fire all the time, this hot liquid. And I was so afraid. I learned that scripture. The Lord just led it to me. I told Lord, I am so afraid. Well, he led me to this scripture and he said, you know what? When you walk through the fire, Debbie, I will be with you. And you know what, Debbie? The flames will not kindle upon you. You're going to be okay. Well, that scripture became very dear to me that summer. I want you to know, probably I've walked through a lot more fires than that since then. And each and every one of you have walked through rivers. And you've been in the midst of fires. And some of you are in fires right now. But I'll tell you what. I want you to know God says, I am in the midst with you. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. And I love this scripture because it talks about when you pass through the waters I will be with, with you, and the rivers will not overwhelm you. When you walk through, you're walking through the fire, you'll not be burned, neither shall the flames kindle upon you. In Daniel, the third chapter, there's a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were men that passed through the fire, and they were not burned. They were men that chose not to fear the gods of, of Babylon, but they chose to fear the one true God. Now, that scripture that we're, we're talking about today, in Isaiah 43, the verses 1 and 2, it says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. That word fear, one of the definitions besides trembling and just being afraid, is to give reverence to, to give awe to, to give honor to. God says, what are you giving awe to? What goes, oh, what causes you? to stand back and um, what causes, what are you giving reverence to where you're considering that as important? What are you giving honor to? Which means that you're giving them power. Oh, God says, what are you giving honor to? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they gave honor to God. And if you'll give honor to God and not those things that are so fearful that would try to take your reverence and try to take your awe from God, then you're going to pass through the fire and you'll know that God is with you. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were commanded to worship this statue 90 feet tall. Everyone was commanded. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when the music played, was left standing. They didn't bow. So they were brought quickly to the king. The king wanted to know why they didn't bow before his statue. And he said, said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, said, if you bow before the statue when the music is played, then, then you will be delivered. But if not, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. And he said, what God among you is able to deliver from that fiery furnace? 
Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't miss a beat. They said, said, we don't even need to answer you, O king, for our God that we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Our God that we serve will be with us in that. He'll, he'll deliver us. And if not, well, we're not going to worship your gods or bow down to your idol. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar, he was enraged at this, and he ordered the fire to be, the furnace to be heated up seven times hotter, and the, the, his soldiers were bound up, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and took them to the, the furnace and threw them in. And since the fire was so hot, it consumed the soldiers that took them to, to throw them in. And as Nebuchadnezzar watched this, he goes to his officials, were there not three thrown into the fiery furnace? I see four walking around, and one looks like the Son of God. Did I tell you that he'll be with you in the midst of the fire? Did I tell you that your God will be with you, that he'll be with you in the midst of the fire? And he's not just with you to stay in that fire, but he's with you to bring you through the fire. For Nebuchadnezzar said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out. And they came out of the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and there wasn't, their clothes were not burnt. They didn't smell, they didn't smell of smoke. They came out, they passed through the fire because God was with them. Now I'll tell you what, God is with his people. If you belong to Jesus Christ, he is with you. He is with you. I love the last part. At this scripture, it says, I, the Holy One of Israel, says, your Savior, your Savior. He's what? He's a Savior. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to deliver. He's a mighty, mighty God that will bring you through. He loves you. Many of us are going through some fiery, fiery places. The Bible says we're not to be surprised in 1 Peter at the fiery ordeal among us, which comes upon us for our testing. And then in 1 Peter again, it says that these trials that we're walking through, that, that they're to prove us like gold as tested by what? Fire! Fire again. They're fiery trials that we go through. But God says, you know what? You're going to go through them, and I am with you in the midst of them. I am with you. I to bring you through so that you don't smell like smoke, so that you're not burnt, so that you're not drowned. God Almighty is with you. And I love the beginning of this verse that we were from Isaiah 43. It says, fear not. Don't be in awe or reverence or honor the thing that, that's coming against you. But you know what? Fear God. Fear God. It says, fear not. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Now, why does God deliver us? Why is he with us? Because you know what? You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. God is a God of, that redeems you. He has redeemed you. I looked up the word that says, fear not. I've redeemed you. That word redeem. It talks about the kinsman redeemer. The kinsman redeemer, that was the, the kinsman redeemer was someone that was related to you, that when he saw you in your poverty, and he saw you in your slavery, when he saw that your land was stolen from you, when, when someone had died in the family, he would marry their, their brother's wife to, to, and take care of her and raise up a child that would be called their name. The kinsman redeemer came, and he would redeem, he would make things right. He would give back your property. He would get back your, your, your freedom. He would give it back. And a kinsman redeemer had to be someone that was related to you. A kinsman redeemer had to be someone that was free. Someone free! It had to be someone that had the, the ability to redeem you. They had the finance. That they had the wealth that was able to redeem you. And not only that, they had to be someone that was willing to come in, to step in and pour out that wealth upon you, pour out their means to redeem you upon you so that you could go free, so you could go free. In the book of Ruth, it talks about a kinsman redeemer. Naomi and Ruth had come back to Israel from Moab. And when they came back, they were in so much poverty that Naomi asked Ruth to go and gleam in the fields. And she was led to the field of Boaz. And as she gleamed around the outside, just, and a gleamer was someone that was, they, the laws 
of God was that you could go into a field and they were to leave some grain for the poor and the needy. So they could pick up this extra grain around the outsides of the fields. And, they, and Ruth went there and she's gathering grain and she comes into the field of Boaz. Well, Boaz is a type of Jesus Christ because I want you to know that our kinsman redeemer, the one that came to redeem us, is Jesus Christ. He is our redeemer. The Bible says of him in 1 Peter that we've not been redeemed with perishable things. Let me say that again. You've not been redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from our empty, futile way of living inherited from our forefathers, but with precious blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, with precious blood, the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. He shed his precious blood to redeem us, to buy us back, to set us free from slavery. And Boaz fell in love with Ruth as she gleamed in her field. And Ruth went to Boaz one night as Naomi told her to and asked him to be her redeemer, her kinsman redeemer. And the story just goes that he goes to another relative that's closer and asks if he could buy the property from her and redeem it from, from, from Naomi. And the, the kinsman redeemer said he didn't want to do that, that, that Boaz could be the kinsman redeemer because he found out that Ruth was involved, that, that whoever got the property had to marry Ruth. And Boaz was more than happy to marry Ruth. No, there's someone that's more than happy to marry you, someone that adores you. Fear not, I redeem you. I've called you by name. I want you. Come to me. Come to me. I'm calling to you. I'm calling to you by name. I want you to know me. I want you to come into my arms. Come and let me protect you and provide for you. Let me be, be with you in the midst of stormy, hard places. We're gonna, I'll walk with you. I'll pass you through them. And you'll come forth as gold. You won't smell like fire. You won't be burned. You won't drown. I'm with you. I'm with you. You're precious to me. And that verse after that, after it says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. It talks about God giving, that looking at you and seeing you as precious and taking you and, and letting you live when others, others perish. Why? Because you've come into a safety. Just like Ruth, she came to Boaz and said, will you redeem me? You're my closest kin. Will you redeem me? I have no might or power in myself. I need a Savior. I need someone, someone, someone that will rescue me. I'm in so much poverty. I'm in slavery. I need you. I need you. Well, that's what we did with Jesus Christ. Jesus came to redeem us, to set us free. When he died upon that cross, we were dead in sin. We were slaves to sin, the Bible says. But he came, and he, you know, sin became sin upon that cross. He shed that precious blood to wash away our sins, to open heaven for all that would call upon him, for all that would say, I need a savior. I need someone that will bring me through the fire I need someone that will save me, that will deliver me. I need someone. I need someone. Well, Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only kinsman and redeemer that, that can deliver you, that can save you. He's paid the penalty for our sins. Let me say that again. Let me say this scripture again. Fear not. You don't have to be afraid. Your kinsman redeemer has come, Jesus Christ. Go to him. Call upon him. I've called you by name. You know what? You're mine. You're mine. God says, when you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, you know what? You're his. You're his. You're his. You're his. You've been redeemed. You've been redeemed. Fear not, I've called you by name. Fear not, I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You were mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. What are you going through? God says, I'm with you. I'm with you. And when you Pass through the waters, I'll be with you, and through the rivers, they'll not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. Nor shall the flames kindle upon you. You know why? Because your God, this Holy One of Israel, your Savior, He's with you. He's with you. Now, I'm going to pray for you, and I just feel like I'm supposed to proclaim over you this day. And as I pray for you and proclaim that God is bringing you through difficult things, I just pray that you would open up your heart and come into agreement with those things that I'm proclaiming. Father, I just praise you and I thank you, Lord God, that you are with your people in the midst 
of their fiery furnaces, Lord God. You are with them in the midst of their rivers. God, that you're revealing your great love for them, that you are with them, Lord God. And Lord God, that you are showing them how they are being changed in the midst of these places, Lord God, that you are showing them that, Lord, even a Shadrach, Meshach, and a Bendigo went through the fire, but when they came out of the fire, they were promoted, Lord God, to high places in the kingdom. I just thank you, Lord, that they would see that in the midst of the, the things that they're walking through, Father God, that promotion is right there, Lord God, that they're coming to another place in you, Lord God, that they're coming to new beginnings, Lord, in, in areas of their life. Lord God, that Father, those things they've waited upon are opening up to them, Father God. I just declare it. I, I proclaim it, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that Lord, you want me to declare that they are yours, they are yours, they are yours, and that you are their Savior, that you are their Savior, that you're mighty to save and mighty to deliver, that nothing's too hard, nothing is too difficult for you. So Lord, I'm just thanking you for great comfort over your people, Lord. I declare it. Comfort and strength, Lord, that they feel you with them in the midst of the flames, Lord God, that they feel you with them in the midst of the river, and Lord God, that they see that you've got your arms around them, God, lifting their head above the waters, Lord, God, bringing them through the fire, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I just give you praise and thanks, thanks to you, and I thank you this day, Lord God, that many come to know you, Lord. I, I declare it, Lord Jesus, that they would see they need a kinsman redeemer, someone to redeem their soul, Lord God, someone to, to buy them back, Lord God. Lord, your word says that we've been held captive by the devil to do his will. So, Lord God, in Jesus' name, you came to destroy the works of darkness, Lord, and you did it through Jesus Christ. Now all they have to do is receive. So I, in the name of Jesus, I just proclaim, Lord God, salvation, deliverance, Lord, that they would receive you as their Savior this day in Jesus' name, Lord. I just thank you, and I praise you, Lord. Now, Father, wrap your people up in your love, Lord. Let them, Lord God, have joy in the midst of these places, Lord, because they know that, that Lord, you've called them by name. God, you've redeemed them, Lord God, that they're not fearing what, Lord Jesus, that other people fear because you are their God. You are with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you have a wonderful week, and just know that God is with you. He's with you. He's with you, and he loves you. Oh, this God, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much. You have a wonderful week. God bless you. Bye-bye.